Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here, and today I have a playthrough of Resident Evil 3, the board game. This is based on the popular video game in which uh, human survivors are traveling through a post-apocalyptic wasteland that is infested with zombies trying to survive and trying to ultimately solve this problem of zombies and undead all over the place. This is the initial scenario. Uh, I'm going to be playing weak human Carlos Oliveira. <laughs> uh, it is a game for one to four players, fully cooperative. I can play true solo in this game. That's what I'm going to be doing for the playthrough. So for this initial scenario, I'm very weak. I won't be able to mow down a lot of uh, zombies. I'm just ducking and weaving, trying to survive. And all sorts of terrible blood-curdling events are going to come out of event decks and all that kind of thing. As I move through the scenario and try to find items that will be useful for future scenarios, this is a campaign-style game with a big, rousing ending. So uh, looking forward to at least getting people started and whetting their appetites with this game. It is a follow-up to Resident Evil 2. So there is a Resident Evil 2 board game. Check that out. This one makes some mechanical tweaks and makes some improvements, which I'm eager to share in this playthrough. But before I do that, let me tell everybody about the One Stop Co-op Shop. We are a gaming empire. We have a podcast. Twice per week, Sunday is gaming-centric uh, episodes, and Wednesdays are special topics. So uh, we have all of gaming covered in our podcast, our YouTube channel, which you're on now. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and also hop over to YouTube Streamed. Uh, check out that channel. Give a subscription there as well. We would really appreciate it. We have our Discord. Discord is a wonderful community. It is open. Uh, it is fun. It is safe. Uh, lots of discussions about brand new hotness and old favorites. Uh, so come on down. We have our Patreon for access to extra tiers, but the actual community participation in our Discord is completely free. We would love to have you. So without further ado, let me go ahead and give a rules overview and get into the playthrough for Resident Evil 3, the board game. All right, so let's get started by taking a look at the character. So that is Carlos there. Uh, there are one of four choices. So in a four-player game, you're playing all of them. Uh, and veterans of the video game will recognize uh, your character, your health tracker, not a lot. <laughs> uh, the guns and equipment, and of course the snazzy uh, dial for the ammo, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, the big thing I wanted to focus on, uh, it really tells a lot about this game in this one little component right here, the die. Uh, this is a successful hit, and there are no other successful hits on this die. Uh, you'll be able to push monsters. I'll show you that in a minute. You'll be able to dodge monsters for the most part, but one lonely hit, one out of six chance. So that just tells you right away so much of the mission statement of this game, which is survival. You're not going to go in here and blow a lot of uh, creatures away. Uh, don't expect that. You will, fear not, get upgraded uh, items shotgun and grenade launcher with the uh, requisite dials right there however you're not rolling that much more dice <laughs> and the dice don't get that much better so uh it is a survival game through and through do not expect to just go in and mow uh use the environment says a lot in terms of the enemies that you'll face a lot of zombies <laughs> and look at that the zombie dog which is a little bit faster uh, and then you get up to the nemesis uh, right there. There's not a, not a lot of variety uh, in the monsters. I mean, they're zombies. <laughs> uh, how much do you want? In terms of the play on the board, uh, at this point, I want to uh, emphasize that this is the retail version. Kickstarter version had uh, improved in co components for doors uh, and some other things. So it's a little bit hard to see here on this overview. Uh, but this is what you're getting with the retail version. This is what I have to review. All right, so uh, you have four actions on a turn. You are going to move one space, uh, and you can also shoot. So shooting right there, that would be a big fat miss. <laughs> uh, you can load up, so you're going to have a certain amount of ammo, uh, and you can reload, uh, find new ones as you go along, which is these spots right there. Uh, you can put up to two ammo behind you, so rolling three total. So out of three, can I get him? Yes. <laughs> it's actually a thing where you roll three dice and you don't know if you're going to kill a zombie. doesn't always happen. Uh, so you can also roll this symbol, which pushes them back. So if they were in my face like that, then and if I got two of those, then I can push them back uh, pretty good, which is exactly what I want. 
uh, you know, standard fare. If you're next to a door, you can flip the door. Uh, if you go in here, then uh, this symbol right there means that you would trigger some kind of event. So you won't know who is in a room. Uh, you would roll a die, uh, this die right here, and it would, there would be a table. And there could be zombies in here. There could be corpses uh, that would resurrect later. So uh, very much playing into you don't know what you're getting, that horror feel, as opposed to more of a straight up dungeon crawler. So let's say you're going into the door and you roll on that snazzy table and you get zombies. <laughs> Uh, the zombies will spawn on the spawn points. Uh, once again, you get other things too. Uh, but as an example, you would get zombies. Uh, so uh, they generally don't do anything on your turn unless you are in their square monkeying with them. So then if I attack and I fail to kill it, then it would get an attack back at me and I would have a chance to dodge. Uh, dodging is fairly easy if it's a small number of zombies, but if there are up to three or if there's a bigger zombie there, then it would be a little bit harder to dodge. You would have to get the best success. Uh, either way, uh, try not to do things in the same square as the zombies. <laughs> It does have a mechanism where if you do successfully dodge and the zombie is still there, after your attack, you can kind of push them away. Uh, so that might be a good way to get the zombies out of your hair or push them where you want to go. As you make attacks, the other zombies on the hallway will respond or link tiles. So then let's say I had made that attack. Oh, who's going on over there? Blah, brains. <laughs> there you go. Uh, for the most part, uh, in, especially in the early game, but in a later game as well, take advantage of those doors. So then if I wanted to go like this and close the door, then these zombies would be out of luck and I wouldn't hear from them. So the zombies have some chances to interact with you during your turn. After your turn, they do get a separate activation. Uh, if this one was next to me, it would attack and I would get my dodge uh, opportunity. If it was apart from me, then it would move one square towards me and then it, uh, play would move very, very quick and easy, the AI for the enemies. The last phase of the turn is the tension deck. Uh, so most of the tension deck are, are these all clear cards. So then uh, trying to build a tension. So it's like, okay, what's going to happen? All clear. What's going to happen? All clear. What's going to happen? Dead rising. Ah! <laughs> or something worse. Uh, so this, this will be pretty full of all clears at the beginning of the campaign. But as you go through scenario, scenario, you will add worse and worse cards. Uh, and the cards that you do add will get worse depending on what symbol is on there. So those are your turns. You're going to go and then the enemy phase and then the tension phase. Uh, those three will cycle around as you move through the entire area. Uh, these red lines denote walls, so you're going to have to go through the doors and everything. Uh, most part, you're going to, to search these items. A are very basic items. B are scenario specific. Uh, C is what you are looking for. C is generally an item that is relevant to progress uh, in the campaign or maybe even in the scenario. So like maybe while well, in one of these places, uh, in this example B, uh, you would find a key that you would unlock the door and you would also unlock this additional piece of map over there. So uh, this game, Resident Evil 3, wants to keep you moving and moving and moving. Uh, the games are satisfying in and of themselves, but they want you to keep constantly look forward to the next scenario, the next thing, the next challenge. And so here is the scenario. Uh, this is the terror level that I mentioned in reference to the tension deck. So as I showed you, uh, there is going to be these symbols right over here. Uh, they correspond to this track. So then the higher the uh, terror level goes, and it only goes up. <laughs> and this is over the course of multiple scenarios. So not only are you adding worse and worse cards to the tension deck, uh, they are going to get worse depending on how horrible things are in Raccoon City. The game uh, starts, the campaign starts with three unlock scenarios. I have um, laid out the Uptown scenario uh, here in this demonstration. But as I uncover C decks and other uh, tokens, I will remove different areas uh, that will be discovered. Uh, that will be, you know, you kind of just move through and eventually you are going to get to the clock tower, uh, which uh, veteran Resident Evil fans are going to know all about that. <laughs> Before I move on, a very quick note about the componentry and the uh, carrying case for the retail version. So then they have this cover and I put my cards and bags and it has room for some of the tokens and some of the uh, other components right there. But if I put that back, 
uh, then I have not a lot of room for, or I mean, I have room for the tiles, but they're just going to be kind of sliding around a little bit. Uh, this is not uh, optimal um, storage, so I just wanted to let everybody know about that. Ready to begin the playthrough. Here is Carlos. Here is one zombie. As I mentioned multiple times through the overview, uh, I want to try to avoid killing monsters and using my ammo. That's a limited resource and just rolling for nothing. So I think I'm going to cut through this little area over here and utilize the most powerful weapon in the early scenario, the door. <laughs> so we're going to go one here. Uh, this is a barricaded door. I'm going to use an action to bust that into an archway. I know that's a little bit hard to see at this uh, higher level, but take my word for it. Uh, the difference between doors and, and uh, barricades is that once you bust down a barricade, you can't close it again. So that's fine. I'm going to go three. And this tile means that I roll on the chart right here. Uh, the chart is uh, the random encounter chart. And as you see, six is empty and it gets worse from there. So we want to roll high numbers. High numbers, baby. A five. Excellent. So then uh, five gets me a corpse. Corpses interact with the tension deck. So sometimes the tension deck will... Um, tell me to resurrect something, but I'm going to go on the assumption that nothing will happen. <laughs> it will be all clear, right? Uh, and then for my last action of the turn, I'm going to search this A. Do that from an adjacent square. And the card A is more ammo. That makes Carlos Oliveira very happy. He happens to be a gun specialist. That is my turn. So then uh, the anywhere on linked tiles. So like this is now a linked tile because it is an archway. Bleh. I wanted to draw this one over here so that he would not bother me when I went over there. Fantastic. All right, so now I pull from the tension deck. Hopefully it's all clear. It is not. Deepening paranoia. If the next character is on the same tile as the start of their tension phase as they began, they must draw two additional terror card or uh, tension cards. And if it was middle of the uh, terror track uh, that I showed uh, for the scenario uh, earlier, then I would remove this card from the game because it's kind of a self-culling, making room for worse cards. So uh, I plan on not being in this room for very long, so that is perfectly fine. <laughs> uh, and this corpse is perfectly uh, safe for now. So then I'm going to move on my turn. We're going to open the door. We're going to go in here. This is a chest. And this is probably the most video gamey thing that the board game does which is that you can put items in there for storage and then they go to the, the scenario page. So then uh, if this was a multiplayer game, I would put like, you know, shotgun and, you know, an eagle eye parts and all sorts of other things that would go in there and then another character could come in and open them and it's kind of another a backpack for you. Uh, doesn't make any sense whatsoever why I would put that in the middle of a <laughs> uptown uh, area of, like I said, very video gamey, but that's fine. So we're going to continue on with my turn. Three, four. And uh, now the monster over here is not in a link tile. This is a tile and this is a tile. Uh, two tiles away. This guy starts to just go to sleep. Uh, I need to go find a rat somewhere. All right, let's go ahead and pull from the terror deck. Lurching gate. No! <laughs> it's supposed to be more all clear than that. I swear. Propelled by some unnatural vigor, your foes lurch forward at an alarming pace, snarling as they bay for blood. I don't have a lot of foes around me. That's cool. Uh, during the next player's turn, all enemies move one extra square. If the uh, fear track was progressed, it would remain in play for one additional round, but it is not. And I don't have any um, foes around me, so the terror deck is being nice to me for now. All right, we move on. So we have a large room over here with a B token and a foreboding corpse. <laughs> that is a corpse right there. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, but first, I'm going to go one, two, three. This is a barricade. We're going to turn that into an archway. Uh, always a terrible idea in any miniatures game to end your turn on a new area where you're spawning stuff. That's a terrible idea. So um, since I don't have anywhere else to go, I'm just going to end my turn uh, there. Uh, these are linked tiles because this is an archway. So the zombies hear me. What? Let's go get him. And they are going to eventually uh, flow this way. Tension deck says all clear about time you showed up. 
All right, next turn, we're going to go in and make some progress. We're going to roll on the orange encounter chart, which is a little bit more vicious. Still empty on a six uh, and uh, the higher levels, but if I roll the one, then I would get two corpses and they would rise from the dead at the end of the turn. No good. So let's see what I get. A five. A five is another corpse. So I've gotten fairly lucky. We're going to go ahead and put that on a spawn point. I don't anticipate that luck will last uh, because I'm going to be in this room for a little while and that the tension deck has ways of waking up corpses. So it's kind of a push your luck. <laughs> I definitely want to push my luck a little bit when it comes to these corpses. Why not? <laughs> Let's go. Uh, two, three, four. Uh, the B deck that I get is... Yeah! Got the boutique key. As you can see, the boutique key is right there. It is locking off access to the map, which I can progress the scenario with. So I got that away early. There's only two cards in the B deck because there's only two tokens there. Uh, so the other B card is would have been a useful item. And if I was playing a full campaign, I would probably cover the whole board and go for both items. But because I'm only playing the uh, just a demo, I am going to just go straight for the boutique key and then make it to the map phase eventually. But that's nice. Oh, and I should note that uh, I have a maximum item capacity of six cards. So I made fun of that item box before. <laughs> and it's still kind of silly, but it is useful. All right, my first try to try to wake up the uh, zombies. All clear. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> So I could probably uh, stick around and search for those A's, but I think I'm not going to press my luck too much. Let us just get skedaddle and get going. So while I'm here, I think I'm going to go open this boutique key. I'm going to give what the game, um, I take what the game gives me. We are going to open that door and we are going to end our turn here. That makes the zombie move, which I'm not too... Um, Worried about because I have a whole turn of actions that I can shoot it. It's not going to attack me this very turn. Tension deck, all clear. That's what I'm talking about, tension deck. All right, so I am actually going to try to take out this zombie because I'm about to roll on the orange chart again, and I could be getting some baddies really easily. So I'm going to try to do the best that I can to make sure I get this thing. So I'm going to go down from 15 to 12. Uh, so using three ammo. And the reason I could do that on the handgun, I probably should have said this in the overview, is because the handgun has this symbol, which is the rapid fire symbol. That gives it the power to use extra uh, ammo and dice on the same roll. And I got him, yes! <laughs> That's actually a pretty good roll. Uh, we are going to get rid of that zombie. There you go, right there. And then we are going to go two, and we are going to remove both of these things. For three, I had given myself two actions to try to take care of that zombie. Uh, I am not, so then I have an extra one. There is no possible way that I'm going to uh, go into that room uh, as my last action of the turn. No zombies are in link tile, so we're going to get an, oh, sorry about that, an all clear. All right, let's go in and see what we could do in orange. <laughs> there it is, number one. Two times corpse, and at the end of this character's tension phase, replace each corpse with a zombie. So not only do I uh, have corpses and I'll get attacked, I can't even take care of them this turn because they're going to rise at the end. That's why this symbol is terrible. So let's go ahead and put corpses right there on the two spawn points. And they're going to rise to the end of the turn. So I could, if I wanted to... Uh, two, three, interact with this thing, and then, you know, those would rise, and then uh, this one at least would attack. Um, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're going to play a little bit smarter than that. We are going to go one, two, and we are going to create a space so that <laughs> they can line themselves up, and I can mow them down effectively pretty good. All right, so they are going to rise. Blah! Here we are. We are zombies. Blah! There we are. I would have locked the door, but I need that thing. <laughs> so I'm going to have to deal with them somehow. All right. So I think my plan of action is going to be to take out one of them and then uh, go around the rest because I don't have, I have limited ammo and I'm not going to be sitting here rolling one die at them one at a time. So my ammo is at 12. I'm going to put that down to nine and I am going to shoot. 
this front one. And I got him! Wow! This is what happens when you roll three instead of one. Bam. Uh, so that was one action. So that in response, the zombie is going to move forward that way. All right, so I know uh, the instinct is to just kind of try to blow this away as well. But again, I'm being mindful of limited ammo. And I skipped those two A's in the other room where I could have gotten more ammo. So we're going to wait. Uh, and we are going to let the zombie come in there for their uh, reaction phase. And then we are going to put up the tension deck. Hopefully it doesn't give the zombie a free attack. It is an all clear. Next round, I'm going to enter the zombie square, which I can do for free. So then the next uh, action, number two, is going to leave the square. That triggers a basic attack, and that would be a dodge. So then uh, the dodge symbol is I have a basically a 50-50 chance because it's a fairly easy to dodge. I do not dodge. I take one damage, but when I am attacked, I can push it one and continue with my move. So uh, I was hoping to escape without any kind of uh, thing happening, but that's unfortunate. Oh, well. Uh, so that was two, three, and then four. I am now able to unlock the second uh, stage of the Uptown map. And just to let you know what that looked like, here is my uh, map that I showed you in the overview. I would put that down, unlocked, Uptown 2. So I'm just going to move. He doesn't like the fact that I am playing with him a little bit. <laughs> And I get an all clear. Let's try this again. <laughs> We're going to go one, two, enter the square. As I leave the square, that is going to trigger a basic attack, which I will try to dodge. I don't dodge it again. Come on. <laughs> That's terrible. I should have just shot him. Uh, and then I'm going to move over into this room. Uh, the zombie moves for that turn. Uh, I get a tension deck draw of all clear. And then for the next round, I am going to close the door. Now I'm back in the room with all the stuff, including a couple of corpses. Uh, I was going to just pass on by, but I lost two health during that encounter. I calculated poorly. Uh, so I'm going to try to um, at least get one of them and see if I can find some herb right there. So we're going to go two, three. The item I draw is an herb. Fantastic. Heal this character or another character by one level. One level? There's better herb than that somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to that just in case I need it. I am now up to five items out of six. Uh, and that was uh, in an action. So I'm going to move here to get away from these corpses. Well, let's see what the corpse is going to do. Uh, all clear. Whew. That will happen more often than not in this beginner scenario. So I'm fine with that. Uh, so let's go uh, beginner uh, next turn. Uh, one, two, three. Remember, this is an archway. I can't do anything about that. And do you remember I have a zombie right there? I'm going to want to shoot that thing. Uh, the other reason why I wanted to save at least a little bit of ammo because I knew I was going to go back there. So I have nine. I'm going to go down to seven. Uh, let's see if I can get away with this little push your luck element right there. I am on fire! <laughs> That's never happened before. Usually it's just a bunch of emptiness. Look at this thing. There's nothing but dodges in this thing. Although I will say that maybe that is um, the game gave me bad luck in avoiding attacks, but it's giving me good luck in killing monsters. Fine. <laughs> so that is four. Here comes this zombie. Let's go ahead and resolve a tension deck draw. All clear. I'm going to get one of, a bad thing eventually, aren't I? <laughs> Okay, so this zombie is guarding this bee, which is another useful item, but it is not a scenario-specific kind of progression item. So I think I can do a thing where I can just kind of like wrap around, end at C, and that would be the end of this particular scenario. So am I going to book it? <laughs> I could. Uh, I could absolutely book it. Uh, and uh, I'm going to take my chances. Why not? Let's see what happens. So we're going to go one, two, three, bang for four. Uh, not going to enter this area yet. This zombie is going to shamble forward. And remember, I am pushing my luck over here just to kind of get through the scenario and observe what happens. Oh, there we go. Tough hide. For one round, zombies which are killed are replaced with corpses. <laughs> the undead are unaffected by even the most mortal wounds. Their terrible thirst, undiminished. So then this is, the, um, if you notice, this, this uh, part right here. I actually put this card in. 
uh, during the at the beginning of the scenario. So this reflects the the tension deck getting tougher as the scenarios go on, and then additional effects as the fear level rises. So it wouldn't be uh, worth killing that thing anyway because it's just going to lay down and be a corpse. I'm just going to try to outrun it. Uh, let's go ahead and move into here and roll on the chart. That is a five. We are going to get more corpses. <laughs> Happen to be standing right on top of a corpse and a corpse right there. Okay, put that, put myself back there, and then we are going to go. So that was one, two, three, four. Let's just walk right over those corpses. Uh, and this zombie is going to move threateningly. We are going to get an all clear. Let's open up that door and get one last encounter. So, uh, and I have two corpses in here, so this encounter could be bad. <laughs> really bad. That is a three, which as you can see is one zombie and one corpse. So I believe that they are on the areas over there. So I'm just gonna yank this corpse in, pile them up. <laughs> and I get a zombie, uh, but it is, I'm not in the zombie square. I'm only adjacent to it. I'm not gonna trigger any kind of uh, reprisal if I just go for C. Uh, I am going to go for C and C is going to be lighter. Oh, fantastic. Used with the lighter fluid to unlock commercial two scenario. Commercial two scenario is linked to commercial one. It is locked right now. So somewhere along the way, in one of these three initial scenarios, there is going to be lighter fluid. And if I put the lighter and the lighter fluid together, just have them in the same inventory, then I would be able to unlock it. And then undiscovered would be, or unlocked would be commercial two. And I would be just open that scenario and I'd be able to play that at a future date. Once again, everything or not everything, but so many things in your scenario is going to lead to the next scenario. So I am going to move out of the door and I'm going to do a little piece of rules lawyering over here. Here is the scenario. The players may choose to successfully complete the scenario anytime after these objectives are met. If all the characters are on the same tile and there are no enemies on their tile, there are technically <laughs> no enemies on the tile. This is an independent tile right there. And the enemies are far behind. So we are going to pull the video game move of teleporting out and ending the demo right here. So that is a playthrough of the Uptown uh, module for Resident Evil 3. I have unlocked different scenarios. I've gotten items, unlocked doors, killed monsters, evaded monsters, or tried to. <laughs> Wasted a lot of ammo. Uh, if I was carrying on, I probably would have searched the A's more thoroughly, taking a little bit more time. Uh, you do risk uh, damage, but it's worth it to kind of stock up on items, put them in that uh, chest that I uh, made fun of. In solo, the chest is bigger, and there's a couple of other accommodations to make solo work, but I'm so happy that one player works. It's just so much faster. Uh, you see, you breeze through the, uh, the decks pretty fast. Uh, this was what was left of the tension deck. There's plenty of cards left, but I also had some uh, cards that I avoided as well. I will leave you to discover. Uh, what is in Resident Evil 3 uh, on your table and your future scenarios. So this is Jason with the One Stop Co-op Shop reminding you that we will see you at the next stop.